Rashad Bateman yeah. for the Ravens. We haven't talked about Bateman really at all. Which is a shame because I feel like you and I have talked about Bateman a lot, just like not on camera, like not while recording. We've talked about Bateman. Right. So Fantasy Pros has him at 29. ESPN has him at 34. We have him at 30. Definition of a huge breakout candidate this year where... Everybody saw what Hollywood did last year, right? Like... Exactly. I mean, before Bateman started playing last year, so I think he was out till week six, um, Brown had 16 or more fantasy points in four of the first five games, six of the first eight, um, and Marquise Brown is gone. Oh, is he? Is Marquise Brown gone? So Devin Duvernay, like, I, I honestly Ooh. can't even read half of these these receivers' names that they have on their depth chart because they just don't matter and aren't going to matter. Bateman has has really good upside value. And, yeah, everybody craps on Lamar from a passing perspective. But, like, statistically, he has some of the best peripheral numbers from an average depth of target. His downfield accuracy is pretty good. And Rashad Bateman was pretty consistent even with Hollywood last year from a targets perspective. It wouldn't be surprising to see him have double-digit targets in a whole bunch of games this year um, with with them throwing with Lamar. So he he also had – like the offense isn't quite what you'd expect from Kansas City because they're – the the Ravens are going to run the ball top three most times in football because of Lamar. But when they do throw, it's either going to Bateman or it's going to Mark Andrews. Marquise Brown had the 10th most targets in the league last season with 146. 10th most targets <laughs> in the league. Now, if you could just slide that in, you're looking at potential wide receiver one. Rashad Bateman isn't a slouch, though. Like he's a first round pick. Like yeah. it was supposed to be like one of the high powered receiving, you know, wide receiving cores in the whole league, not just that division. Um, he was not healthy last season either. And I don't think that people remember the fact that he had abdominal seizure, uh, abdominal surgery, excuse me, um, and missed five games. He missed the first five games because he had abdominal mm -hmm. surgery. And so he said he was only about 75% at most at any one point last year. So I am really excited to see what Bateman can do while healthy, filling the role for a top 10 target share and in one of the league's most high powered offenses. He has all of the makings of a year two wide receiver breakout candidate. And traditionally, yeah. receivers usually do break out into that second year. He is a one hell of a lottery ticket and somebody that I'm trying to get after. So, yes, please get some Rashad Bateman. Yeah, going is pick 85 currently. So um, just really, really good value, which is like right at the start of round eight. Um, you could do a lot worse than wide receiver one Rashad Bateman in round seven or round eight of your fantasy drafts. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going three running backs. I'm going three running. Like I'm, fl I'm flirting with it now. Just, just because there's so many just, wide receivers. There's so available. many wide receivers and I can get Zeke in the third round. Like this Rashad Bateman <laughs> is incredible in the fifth round. It's really great.